Number seven ministries. The spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news. Hello, welcome to Number Seven Ministries Christian Outreach. Today's short sermonette is called The Underground Church. Most Christians will come together and agree on the point that the actual physical building is not the church, that the church is us, people, when Christians, believers in Jesus Christ, when we come together, we are the church. But I want to make this point is that if you do not come together, you are by yourself and you are not the church until you come together. And by yourself, you are just a Christian. Jesus said, when two or more gather together in my name, there I am. And I see today that the devil is deceiving a lot of Christians. And I believe Christians that are deceived, I believe oftentimes they have good intentions, good motivations, and they mean well. And I believe this that as you grow as a Christian, God is going to heighten your discernment and you are going to be able to see demons. You're going to be able to discern when people are operating in the Holy Spirit and you're going to be able to see when people are operating out of flesh. This is the thing is that today you see a lot of Christians and I believe that they are Christians. They are using YouTube, they are using the TV, they are using the radio, they are using the internet to replace the gathering together of believers. And someone would argue with me and say, well, it's exactly the same thing, that all church gatherings in the building are evil. Well, that can be true some of the time, but it's not true all the time. It would be the epitome of pride for us to say that every single pastor is evil. Every single building is evil. A building has no power to be good or evil. And I don't care whether you gather together in a TP, whether you gather together at McDonald's, whether you gather together in a car. Wherever you gather, don't gather together to meet coffee. Gather together in Jesus' name. Because Jesus said, when two or more gather together in my name, there I am. And so the problem today I see is that Christians are replacing gathering together in Jesus' name with YouTube, with TV, with the radio, and with the internet. That is a dangerous thing, a dangerous game to play. And someone will argue and say, well, it's exactly the same thing. No, it's not. It's not even close to exactly the same thing. Let me ask you this. Is an online relationship the same as a physical gathering together relationship? Can you get pregnant online? No, you can't. The results and the fruit of physically gathering will be different. There will be different reactions and different responses that are going to happen when you physically gather. It's not even close to the same. And we can't replace what the Bible says for us to gather together. I understand above and beyond that a lot of churches, all they care about is money. I understand that a lot of churches, they care more about the actual institution of the building and the religion than they do the people. But we can't say that we're there yet, that all churches are evil. All pastors are evil. It's just not true. And if you feel that you're the only true blue sold out to Jesus Christ Christian and everyone else is going to hell, you need to ask God about that. Did God send you out alone and had, had you not to be able to fellowship? The Bible says iron sharpens iron. You know, the Bible also makes an extreme big deal about laying on hands. We have a deacon at this ministry who actually taught a whole entire sermon just on laying on hands. How is it possible that we can lay on hands over the internet? Can we touch the screen and get the same results? 
No, I don't think so. I believe that the YouTube church, the internet church, the TV church, all the radio church, all of those things, I believe that they are good tools. They are good instruments, and I believe God does use them, but not to the extent that we should stop gathering physically together in the name of Jesus. And the moment that we do that, the devil is going to have his way with us. He's going to divide and conquer us. And this message is out of love, not to talk down on you. And there are a lot of extreme teachings that I hear. And people in uh, in Christianity, we want to take an extreme position and say everyone else is wrong. You know, right now there's a huge trend that's taking place in Christianity saying that if we avoid gathering together as the body of Christ, that makes us more spiritual. If we avoid going to a building, that makes us more spiritual. That's not biblical. And the other extreme lie is that if we gather together in a building, the more people that gather together, the more God is glorified. Well, that's an, another lie too, because if that was true, then rappers who talk about pimping and talk about hoes, they gather together by the millions, but that does not mean God is glorified. And I don't necessarily believe that the amount of people that gather together uh, proves it's of God or proves that it's not of God. Neither do I believe the actual physical building built by man's hands has anything to do with whether God's going to be glorified. No, it's the heart of those. But I want to ask you a question seriously for you to evaluate yourself. Why is it that you are not gathering together with other believers? Do you believe that because there is evil things taking place that God gave you a license to avoid gathering. See, this is the thing. When you look at the seven churches that Jesus addressed in Revelation, he mentioned all the negative things that they were taking. He rebuked them and said that you need to repent or I will take back your light. But notice that most of the churches that Jesus addressed he did not just rebuke them. He did not just find fault with them, but he actually saw the positive things that they were doing. He saw the good that they were doing, and he first encouraged them before he rebuked them. And so my question is this, do you see any of the positive things that are taking place in the church gatherings, or do you only see the negative things? Because you have to put them both in practice and ask God, where do you want to go? Or do you just become lazy and just give up? Or are you afraid to give your money to a church building or to a pastor or to a congregation? Are you scared to give your money? Is that why you avoid gathering together? Are you afraid to forgive another person who hurt you in the church? Do you believe that you're the only spiritual person out there because it's not true you're not there are other believers who need your gift and sometimes you're not going to come in contact or be able to fully operate until you physically gather together don't cheat other people in the gift that god gave you and don't cheat yourself out of the gift that other people have for you and remember the bible says this that the gifts spiritually the gifts are giving given without repentance which means they could be on their way to hell but god did not take back the gift that they have that can edify you and if you're wise in god and if you're spiritual you will be hungry and take heed when you stand lest you fall don't think that you can be a solo agent for god without the help of other people because you are now operating in pride God will have us to gather together, and it only takes two to gather together in Jesus' name for God to be glorified. Because when you're by yourself, you become independent. And remember, Satan, all he wants to do is divide and conquer. And I want to expose a few lies that are out there. One of the lies that is taking place throughout the world is that if you don't go to a church gathering, then that means that you're not saved or you can't be saved. That's a lie. 
okay the other lie that's out there is that if you do go to a church gathering that means that you're not saved or you're deceived that's a lie and that's not true either remember the thief on the cross he did not go to any church gatherings or functions and yet jesus said i will remember you in heaven so this is not about salvation this is about working out your own salvation to the extent that you need help from other people and other people need help from you let's read what the bible says together it says hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 let us not let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching the next bible verse that i would like to read matthew chapter 18 verse 20 when where for where two or three are gathering together in my name there i am in the midst of them fellas let go of all your excuses stop making excuses to not obey the word of god humble yourself and don't be lazy that you give up on the true christians i know that a lot of times we can go to a church gathering and there may be two to three hundred people present and you may only have a spiritual connection with about four or five of them. Well, guess what, fellas? Those four or five are the ones that you need to be clinging to. Those are the ones that iron sharpens iron. Those are the ones that are gathering together in Jesus' name. And you cannot cheat yourself out of the four or five that God is going to call you to. God bless you and have a wonderful day. Number seven ministries, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind and to release the oppressed.